<laughs> yes. Oh, greetings, greetings, everyone. Welcome to a Tuesday night live stream. Um, there's a deafening amount of noise in the background. There's a snowstorm going on in Ark. Pix Ark. We'll get to it. Uh, <laughs> and a tip note. Yeah. Hi, Kugas. <clears throat> How's everybody Wah. doing? <laughs> I still need to put that sound effect in there. I need to go dig it up off of somewhere that I can find on the internet and, and uh, hook it up so it plays on loop when uh, uh, or plays. Maybe I don't want to play it on loop. Maybe just have a nice long sound clip that starts. We don't want it on all the time. That would get annoying. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I said, ah! I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, we are playing Pixar. We're, we're analyzing Pixar this evening. We might not be playing it. And stream is starting. Black Knight, let's, let's go ahead and quit torturing the people in good game footage. Um, okay, so I am in my underground bunker. Uh, I, I, we're going to go over tonight what Pixar is and how it is and the features and the things that are apparently features or supposed to be features but aren't because they're not really implemented. Lots of stuff like that. What did you break now, says Kugas. Um, thank you for the host, Black Knight, to you. So, okay. Pixar is a merger. I do not mean this in a hyperbolic way. I do not mean this in a trite and kind of, you know, derisive way. It really is an attempt at merging Ark and Minecraft. And I, I cannot stress enough how amazing that would be if it was actually finished and it actually worked. But, yeah. Um, so, like, I made a, I played Minecraft style. We started playing Ark style, and that's actually wrong for Pixar. So we started playing Minecraft style, and I made, we made underground bases and built normal bases on top of them, and I started mining and mining and mining um there's more there's coal right there coal ore flint just basically their gravel they have a gravel ore it's got gravity just like minecraft the world generates just like minecraft it's got ore deposits that are randomized underground look a decorative block marble it's not an actual resource um And how how far to bedrock? Yeah. Um, if you look under at the top right, it says like snowy. Two underneath of that is a little grid indicator and a number. That's how high you are from bedrock. Okay, so it's that's just like Minecraft. That's example number one that you just witnessed. I was actually is this my bed? That is my bed. You um, killed yourself. I, I was twelve blocks from bedrock, and then I went down and I stood on bled bedrock. Then suddenly, because I brushed up against the ladder. I teleported about 40 blocks straight up and fell. When you're falling, you can't grab the ladder to slow down or stop. So ladders are actually death sentences if you're going more than six or seven blocks. They're bad. They're really bad. So let's go all the way back down. I'm not going to look down or anything funky. And you'll see that number that, that uh, Fox was talking about, 72, 71. My underground base is actually about 75 above blocks above bedrock. Y level 75, as it would be called in Minecraft. Um, it's actually Z level 75 in Pixar. Um, hey, Night Pirate from the Games Inc. Lands on our... So yeah, I'm going all the way down to bedrock. Let's see if we can get down to it again and not bug out. Da -da 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 Three, two, one. I'm going to back up. So as not to accidentally brush up against the ladder. I'll take everything. There we go. There is my lightning bug. But you see, I'm this is bedrock. It's unbreakable. It even looks kind of like Minecraft bedrock. I've mined off good distances. That was an iron deposit. Uh, this was copper. This was some magical stones that you had need for the bogus magic system in this game. There's more marble, more marble. And, uh, you know, etc., etc. It's Minecraft, basically. It really is. Greetings from work, says Mallrat. Poor work person. Bigram's Underground Fortress. Hey, you haven't seen it, man. Uh, you haven't seen uh, the above ground part. I'm kind of proud of that part. 
Okay, you see, there's coal, sandstone. Uh, there's some more gravel, basically. Um, more marble. More coal. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Minecraft. Uh, if you're in the right biomes. If you are in the right biomes in um, Pixar, and you dig below ground, you will find lava pools. And I think obsidian. But, you know, whatever. Minecraft dinos and cuter. Yeah, I can go with that, actually. That's a fair assessment. Dungeon running. It's got no dungeons. Well, that's not true, actually. It does have dungeons. I'm not 100% sure where most of them are. I found uh, five instances of one kind of dungeon that it's got. A frozen castle. Um, so here we go. All the way up to the top. And I step left and we're, we're off. Here's my bed. This is a thing that I absolutely hate. It's called an alchemy stove. It's basically a, a machine that lets you turn one kind of magic stone into a kind of magic essence. That's it. It just changed states. Why they couldn't get that and put it in this table right here, the magic workbench, I don't know. They have to make a separate block that you can't turn off and always makes a <laughs> noise. And it really... It's like a grinder. Yeah, it really pisses me off. Um, this is the Firefly Pillar Lamps, uh, I think, Fox, you made it for me? Yes. Yeah, you stick a Firefly in it, and it's basically light all the time. This room is lit up, like, so well because of that block. This thing, it's great. Um, I've got my two fridges. One for cooked meat and jerky, and I've got a Pteranodon egg in there. And, uh, another one for raw meat, which is now currently spoiled, but whatever. Um, I've got, you know, my normal workbench for making stuff, my firearms workbench. Um, various cabinets to restore resources in. I made a little porch out here in this lower kind of valley area, this ravine. Um, and uh, I paved over it. I've got some workbenches out here, like uh, Taylor's workbench, and this is a called a decoration hut. You use this to uh, make uh, certain kinds of decorations that you unlock for your your houses. So, like, I've only got carpet here right now, which is awesome. But, you know, that's all I've got. And this one over here, this is the uh, uh, hut DIY, where you can make structure blocks, which look nicer. Like, I can make stone, looks like fine stone, which is actually super cool. Um, let's see. Marble. You can make an ordinary marble or fine marble. And then there's uh, Wild West is a decor scheme. I don't have all of that unlocked. I don't technically actually have marble unlocked. I can't make any of it at all. As I can. Um, so, I can totally make a Pixar styled MC pack. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I was tempted to uh, start doing that until we had to start putting out fires in one of our current packs. I have an elevator because ladders are dangerous, especially anywhere that there is a Brontosaurus or a Sauropod, as they're called nowadays, apparently, because kids don't like fun. Um, I have, a, uh, I'm going to go ahead and. Okay. Wooden elevator track. Doesn't want to cooperate. And this is the kind of problem that I've been having. Let's see if I go over here, I get all these options. You'll see weight limitations. I can drop, elevate set a passcode for it, whatever I want to do. Turn the whole thing off. Access inventory. Let's take all the thatch out. Okay, that might just be stuck up there for now. Who knows? Um, made a bridge to get off the ravine. I mean, across the ravine. Oh, look, it's snowing. Um, I've got... See, there's the sauropods. I'll, I'll go into those pains in the neck uh, in a minute. Um, I planted some crops, like I've got wheat right here, stem berries, rock carrots, 
Tinto berries. I've got narco berries. I've got some magic berries down there. This is the water reservoir. It pulls in water from down here. Um, and this is my refrigerator, basically my ice box. Like literally, you put ice in it, snow, and it keeps stuff, the berries viable. This is one thing that they did where the preservation bin would keep anything with a food deg degradation timer in uh, arc. It would preserve anything. Well, now they split it off into more blocks and more resources. Now, if it's berries or any vegetables, if it's not meat, basically, or eggs, it has to go in here. Anything else that's not meat or, uh, or eggs that you want to preserve in the preservation bin has to go in one of these, which I think is kind of dumb, but whatever. Um... Water pipes, watering crops. I put these trees up in a row, specifically. I don't cut these trees down. These are not harvesting trees. These are barrier trees. These act as a wall against the sauropods, because you'll see these big giant things will rub up against these trees. They're some of the only things they actually obey the physics for. They'll rub up against the tree and start turning around and going the other direction. It's one of the only things that keeps them from stomping all over my garden. So, yeah. Um, Got some windows. I need to pull this little corner out. I, I have not gotten a chance to do that yet, but this is where my feeding trough is. That will get moved inside. Um, I got some nice windows all the way around on the second floor that I kind of can't get up to because my elevator is stuck. What are you talking about? Auto mod, you're drunk. Okay, um... Hi, Tyranodon. Why can I not... Okay. Let's... Go down real quick. That's my collection of dinosaurs. I keep them locked up. I have one out, my Pteranodon. It's in the attic. It's in the uh, upstairs area of the loft, but I can't get to it. Needs more redstone signal. Yeah, I wish it was that simple, honestly. Um, there we go. Okay. Let's see what happens. Yep, that's what I thought. This game does not know what physics are. Ropes and pulleys, make sure that there is enough thatch to activate the lever. Yeah, this is the part I'm a little confused about. It says they're thatch powered, and I put thatch in it to see what that would do. Oh, the elevator came off. Great. But, um, I think all that did was bug it out. I don't know. Because this one, I've never put thatch in this one, and it works fine. Um, so this is one of the things that you're going to run across with Pixar if you get into it. A week ago, I probably would have said yes. Now, I'm like, eh, maybe wait. It's an early access, and there's a big, a lot of big holes in the game. Uh, and I'm not just talking about, like, you know, performance stuff, or... Nope. Where is it? There it is. I need one of those, please. Let's see if we can get this to work. Um, there's a lot of stuff that they advertise the game is having that isn't actually in the game. And I've, this has started to, the more I've thought about it, the more it's kind of started to irk me. Here we go. Enable lift. And then you do elevate. It'll go up. It's the first time I've had one bug out. And boop. Stop it right there. Here is my flyer. I've gotten so detached with these things because they die so constantly that this one is called Flyer 5. Yes. Um, he is currently being fed by, or... She is currently being fed by the feeding trough downstairs. But, uh, see, I have a nice little takeoff window right here. 
Um, these dumbasses do get in the way, but, I mean, for the most part, they leave me alone. They, I made the building this tall specifically so they will hit the side wall and kind of start turning around. But this is where I have to kind of hug the floor. Because when they start swinging around, their tail will come through the, the building. And if I'm standing up, it will slam me against this side wall and it will uh, almost kill me. Uh, clipping through the building. It's great. It's awesome. It's a wonderful feature. Um, I have windows that can open. Isn't that glorious? And close. Okay. So, let's drop. Woo. It does look kind of like the Sfax texture pack from, uh, from Minecraft. I kind of agree with that. I, I think that's a valid comparison. Um, but, yeah. Uh, let me see real quick. Um, I need to find Parasaur. There we go. Triceratops. Nope. Parasaur. Um, yep, there you are. Put the saddle on. This is where we do the back and forth and the back and forth. Cha cha. Now, several problems that I have with this game that's like outside of the little bugs, right? It's got a lot of bugs, but that's not really, you know, early access game. They're going to have bugs. Um, there's a lot of design choices about the game that make no sense. For one, um, if a creature is, uh, a lot of the starting creatures in this area that you see right now are quote unquote mundane creatures, right? They are, you kill them with normal weapon damage or whatnot. Now the, the big sauropod in the background has got a crap ton of health. I could kill it with normal weapons, but it would take three forever and I would die in the process. Then there's magical creatures. Because the game has magical creatures and magic in it, then you're supposed to kind of use the magic on magical creatures. The problem is... There are a lot of resources in the magic biomes that you need to get to get into magic that's guarded by magical creatures, which you need the magic to kill. So it's kind of circuitous. I am... Let's see. It says snowy. The snow has stopped. It's lying. It's going to come back in a second now. And there it is. Um, that's one thing that I kind of think is a really bad design decision. Uh, I, I don't like that. I think it's absurd. Is it fun that they put um, put magic in? Yeah, I think it's interesting. It could have been cool. Where's the Dillo? Okay, here we go. I have a Dillo over here. It's level 43, and that is a fair threat, but um, I have had a level 33... This is like the third Wanderer that I've had, Parasaur. I've had a level 3 one of these Parasaurs that got two-shot by a level 2 Dillo, which makes no sense. The aggression scale and the damage stuff is completely out of whack. Let me see if I can find out where these people live. Heart is over here somewhere, and I can't remember where now. I'll just keep going until I hit somebody's house. Is it over here? Nope, that's a massive hole in the ground. Um, so I think magic is kind of weird. Um, the damage curve is completely out of whack. Um, they have this thing called aggr the aggression meter. You'll see these three little animal heads right above like that pteranodon. Can you see it right there? It says female pteranodon, there's three little animal heads. Um, that is a multiplier on damage. Basically, whatever number of amount of you know animal I mean a, a threat meter you have you have a multiplier oh here we go this is Hart's house she's got a ramp down into her base most of it's underground and uh, the aggression multiplier gets absurd it also dictates how um, 
how large of an area a hostile creature creature will aggro in, which gets really crazy. These are pre-generated kind of dungeony kind of houses, apparently. Um. Oh, there's another portal over here. I have not gone through that one. I'm heading up the coast to, I think, Trunk's house. I'm not sure. I might miss it. We'll see. If I do, I'll just come back south. Um... Can't remember. Uh, cut the corner really tight. Okay. We can start heading back this way. Hey, Trickster Hunter, what's going on? That's why in my last pl arc playthrough, I started message messing with the sliders, making it more fun and less, oh my god, we're all gonna die. Yeah, and there was a certain amount of that that, that Trunks had to go back and do after the fact. Um, gonna get this. You put it in a dino, and it goes from spoiling in seven minutes to spoiling in 28 minutes. I, I don't know why, but, you know, put your perishables in your dinosaur. Apparently, they're refrigerated. Who knew? Um, uh, turning radius on a lot of these dinos are dumb, but it's that way in Ark, so that's not a game flaw on Pixar's part. Um, oh, here we go. Iris, level 27. I think this is your place. Right, Fox? Um, yes. Well, wait. I is see. it a giant wall? It's a That's big... trunks. Oh, it's just a big wall? I'm really? a tiny hut off from the side of him. Oh, okay. Groot and Buckbeak and uh, all sorts of crazy stuff. Quetzals and whatnot. Okay. Um... Trunks got way ahead of us at some point in time by getting a couple of lucky tames and uh, being able to get a little further around on the map. Um, bring, uh, let, me, let me pass, you silly parasaur. So yeah, um, got my first thatch house made. Yay, immediately curb stomped and corpse camped by two level 80 Rexes. Yeah. So that's where it comes to another major actual design flaw. Um, I need to make this bridge wider. Let's go this way. Swimmy, swimmy, Parasaur. I'm not sure what leveled up, it or me. I think it did. If you're riding an animal and you see a level up, it's the animal. Which I find confusing. Yeah. I'm actually going to hop off. We're gonna do this, take all. I'm gonna convert it Boop. back into a block. Its saddle gets left behind. We pick that up, we go inside. And we put everything away, including in my giant gumball machine, the dinosaur. There it is. I don't know why I closed these. Oh, now it's raining. Fabulous. And it's going to be snowing again soon. Okay. So. Let's go up. The world of... Um, I kind of wish that... Uh, Trunks was around to give me op ad access. So I could do the map reveal command. Um, that would be nice. Okay. <clears throat> the map for, for, um, Pixar is basically divided into quadrants. And zero, zero is, at, zero comma zero is at the very, very middle. Okay. Right now, we're in the middle of the lower right quadrant. So we're at positive 1,020 by positive 745. And I'm at a height of 106. Um, the way that M Pixar generates is twofold. It's got it's like Minecraft, where it's got a world seed, and the world seed determines the map. Um, however, comma, 
Uh, it's also got a second seed, which is an origin seed, which determines where all the resources are. So it's possible to actually, the resources are not consistent numbers. It's not like in Minecraft where it does a certain amount of ore per chunk or per area or whatever. Um, it's random and it's based upon a seed random, which means you can get a seed that is like the super premium ore seed. And it's got way more ore below ground in way better locations than most other uh, map generations do. That is possible. And I think that's super dumb. Problem number two, the map world gen. All these, if you look on the right-hand side of this, or the right third of this map area, it says Doom Lands, Dark Forest, Frozen Lands, Golden Realm, Magic Forest, Desert, Swamp, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And uh, there's a little meter. Starts at the top with a really evil-looking skull all the way down to an ordinary skull at the bottom next to uh, Nova's Grasslands. You're supposed to have rally points in a lot of novice grasslands so people can start off at the rally points. Usually there's about six, sometimes there's up to eight. Uh, the pro and usually those rally points are in novice grasslands or grasslands. The problem we ran across on this server when we started, way up in the top left corner where those markers are, is that you can start on a map with a rally point that is surrounded by dead. I mean by death. So ours had a dark forest a frozen land and a magic forest, all top half threat stuff, really high level stuff. And dark forest and magic forest are uh, magical creatures, which means we couldn't kill them with ordinary weapons. So that made it doubly bad. Um, on this map, I've traveled a pretty good distance in different directions, as you can see. I've done some flying around the map. Um, and um, what we discovered was we're missing several biomes. There's also a couple of biomes not listed on this chart on the right-hand side. It should be. Like there's a bamboo biome that's got panda bears and thorny, bo thorny boars and stuff like that. We don't have that anywhere on our actual map. It's a lower-end biome. Um, we're supposed to have this thing called the Golden Realm, which has the Argentavis, the, the better flying birds, the step up from the Pteranodons. Argentavis are basically the kind of the top-end flight uh, if you discount weird stuff like dragons or uh, ghost dragons or um, I don't know. But uh, we can't get those because there's no golden lands, golden realm on this actual map. We don't have any. It did not generate with any. So when you do a world gen, you're not guaranteed to get every biome. This is not an endless map. It's got hard borders. You can't just keep exploring like in Minecraft until you find it. That's another major design flaw in the game. It's possible to get a map that is 75% frozen lands and all the starting areas are in frozen lands. And if that's the case, there is no way to actually play that map. Not really, unless you're absolutely hardcore and in it for self-torture. So this is something that we have actually... Uh, thank you, Ohanzi. Um, this is something we have discovered uh, the hard way <laughs> through some exploration and through some, you know, uh, admin codes and whatnot we've discovered. Yep. Okay, let's turn around. It's rainy and it's probably going to start snowing again, but whatever. Um, yeah, you're hot. Great. I'm going to swap these out and we'll get told it's cold in about five minutes. So um, we've discovered the hard way. There's a lot of pretty critical flaws in Pixar. There's stuff that they have not thought through very well or they have not implemented very well um, and things that aren't finished, that they're advertising with screenshots in the actual Steam Workshop. Like there's, there's this iconic shot of um, somebody fighting a dragon with a wand. They're fighting a fire-breathing dragon with a wand. Uh, I think it's a girl in this kind of interesting looking magical outfit. Yes. Yeah, that you can't do any of that. There are no fire breathing dragons in the game currently. There's just ghost dragons. And they're interesting, but that's not what they are like. And, uh, uh, you know, you also cannot really have a fight with a magic wand with the magic in the current state that it's in. There's a lot of it that doesn't function or can't be used yet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, eh, so that's, that's kind of bad. And uh, if you go to look at Steam's review... A Pixar now. When I first got it, I really didn't. Um, do I have this mark? 
Yep, I do. Uh, when I got it first, I really didn't have a problem with... Wait a minute. Nope. There we go. West. That's the way I want to go. Um, I didn't really have a problem with, with uh, uh, the reviews. The reviews were in a better state. But if you look at the recent reviews now on Steam, the game has got a mixed review rating. And everybody cites problems with the aggression level scaling and how uh, you know monsters interacting with each other, making it almost impossible to do certain things in-game. Um, the number of bugs, the number of features that are being advertised that aren't actually implemented yet. Uh, it's kind of bad. Um, it's got problems. And we have run across a lot of these problems very, very hard. Um, we're still looking at maybe some people are still kind of interested in playing. And um, Trunks has been very nice to run this server for us. Uh, we've considered maybe resetting the map and seeing if we can get a better map. Adjusting some of the dials to make it a bit softer and a bit easier. I think that could be very, very intriguing to do. Um, but there's still a big chunk of like, um, lots of equipment have damage meters, not lots, but some critical equipment have damage meters like gas masks and, uh, uh, shields and, um, some of the other higher end weapons. And if you're near a sauropod when it walks and it does that stomp on the ground that makes the camera shake, uh, it maxes out the durability damage on the weapon in one shot and kills it. So I've literally had my anti-poison mask damaged just by a, Br a Bronto walking past me, which is incredibly stupid. It didn't step on me. It was about 10 blocks away, but that was enough for it to do it. I've died about 10 times being shaken off of the ladders in my actual house. Um, all sorts of crazy stuff like that. And it's just, it's not fun. The game's got a lot of problems on things like that. What is that? I see what looks like a glowing bulb of light at the bottom of one of these magic trees. Oh, that's a treant. Let's go. Sorry. It's going to start throwing things at us. Yes, I see your big evil eyes. Let's let's move a little farther out of range so it can't hit us with a rock or something. Yeah, it is following us. Right, can you swim? Turns back into a tree. I want to tame one of those, but I can't, so... Eh. The trans? No. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying they're not tameable. I'm saying I can't tame them. Because you need the... Um, oh, there's a griffin. Let's flee for our lives. Um, you need the sleepy magic arrow, not the normal sleepy arrow. And I can't make those right now because I can't get enough of the resources to actually craft them. So, yeah. Anyway, that was a, that was a magic forest. They're very interesting and cool, but eh, they're kind of a death trap. Lots of places in the game are. So, um, yeah, I have been very, very intrigued by the possibility of Pixar, but it's not exactly living up to that possibility at present because of some of the flaws and some of the holes in it. Um, I would love to see this game get turned into, you know, the next to Minecraft, so to speak, where, you know, you could do mods like you can with normal Ark, and we could fill some of the problems and the holes by uh, uh, using some mods to correct that. We can do that in, in Normal Arc if we want to do. It's just that, you know, Normal Arc's game engine is dog poop. So, it doesn't run very well. Let's go back over here. That is a Pariser uh, on one playthrough of, um, I think they're big and adorable looking. They're kind of like mini Brontos. On one playthrough of um, Arc, I actually had a, a mobile home tacked onto the back of one of those, and I'm walking around the map. It was really cool. I like that. Um, I want to see if I can find some of the really dangerous places to show off. From a safe distance, of course. Mm, boop. Uh, one big problem I have with the game right now... Uh, in our current housing location. Two things, really. One is the Brontos. And uh, number two, let's go north. Um, number two, here's my house right there. You can see the glowing seeds. Number one is the Brontos are a pain in the neck. And number two is the actual seasons. There are no seasons in Vanilla Arc. The temperature, not really. The temperatures are gauged by what biome you're in. Well, in this, they threw temperatures, they threw seasons on top of it to make it more interesting and more dynamic. 
It's a great idea in concept, but it basically just ends up being loud and annoying most of the time. And it's not really fun to deal with. Most of, more than half, I would say, of the quote unquote year that we've had in this new valley that we moved to has been snow, constant snow and snow covering things. And, uh, you know, you have to wear your cold weather gear, which doesn't have a good armor rating. You can't wear any of your iron stuff or you'll freeze to death. Um, it renders a lot of the perks of advancing and getting like copper armor or iron armor uh, irrelevant because you can't wear that stuff without basically constantly being cold and taking side effects from that. So, eh. um, let's see. I mean, not to mention the other day I went, I got on and I logged in with no stamina. Yeah. Passing out every two minutes. And according to Trunks, I was punching. Yeah, yeah, you were stuck punching constantly. Nothing um, was taking damage. My screen was not indicating that I was punching. But my stamina was constantly empty, so I was passing out every two minutes. Nope, 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 nope. Not there. It's a big dick wall. Land on it. Thank you. So this is Trunks' place. He's got Toshiro, which is a Soul Reaper. Um, he's got a couple of, que uh, well, a Quetzal, which are these giant, like, prehistoric bird things that, that you can put whole houses on the back of. Um, a bunch of names I can't read. Thorny Lizards, that's from the desert. He's got a Terry Cruz. Okay, he named his trike Terry Cruz. Sure. Uh, yeah, Buck he named it Terry Cruz. Yeah, he's got Buckbeak, which is uh, a, a griffin. Um, Emperor Scorpion. That's it's a giant scorpion from the desert. Um, oh yeah, he does. Do, he does have two Quetzals. Iris, which I think is a big uh, carnivorous plant from the swamp. Um, somewhere around here, he has a killer attack tree. I'm not quite sure where. Oh, and then he's got George outside the actual thing. George is a ghost dragon? I think. Yep, it's a ghost dragon. So, yeah. Those things are terror of my existence. I hate them. I hope it dies. Um, George is so friendly. I don't care. Uh, plague on the world. Plague on the world. Let's see. Um, uh, what was I ranting about? I was ranting about so many things. Apparently people like to hear me complain about stuff. Um, didn't you take that thing across the island too? What? Oh, the uh, Parasaur. Uh, the Parasaur? Yeah, I did. I walked it all the way around the southern end of the island. I went from the southwestern tip to halfway up the eastern side where my swamp base was. Uh, and I really liked that thing. It was a very functional base. We had a couple of mods that let you pick up blocks instead of having to demolish them. You could pick them up and pack them away. So I had a whole base that I could unpack, a mobile base that I could just kind of unpack and deploy real quick. And then I could pack it all up instead of, I don't know, five minutes and put it back in the Pariser. And it was fine. It was great. It was awesome. Uh, I really did like that session of Ark. I just wish the game, the actual performance, the frame rate of the game was more stable and more smooth and more people could play it. It's just so inaccessible because the game client is just garbage. So... That's the one thing that constantly frustrates me about Ark. I, I see the appeal of Ark, especially with mods, but I, the game client is horrible. Um, there's so many other games that I could uh, make parallels to that we play a lot right now, but I'm not gonna. Um, oh, I just saw something fall out of the sky. There are these caves down here, these ravines. But they don't really serve a purpose. There's some stuff that spawns down here, but that's about it like some mushrooms, but most every, it's like the only thing I can think of that spawn in the ravines are mushrooms, like magic mushrooms. They walk around, they hop around, stuff like that. They're creatures. And otherwise, nothing really spawns down there. Everything else spawns above ground and falls down into it. Um, here we go. Swamp, then I can take you over to see some of the deserts. And there's some, I think some ruins over here. There's some ruins. <laughs> Squeak. There's some ruins in the winter area. There are some ruins towards the opposite end of the island. 
Yeah. Well, I, I, I've seen five snow ice castles. I know where there's a cluster of five snow castle. I mean, ice castles, like within all within 500 blocks of each other. Like that bottom left entire corner mm-hmm. quadrant. Yeah. Fourth of the map is ice. Yeah. There's no point. Yeah, the whole bottom quadrant of the map is is all ice, and there's very little there. Um, the ice section of the normal uh, vanilla arc maps, because arc does not have world gen. Normal arc doesn't have world gen. They're fixed, pre-designed, artisanally crafted maps, and they are very, very specifically crafted in specific ways. So when you play those maps, you will always find the swamp in one place. You always find the hills and I mean the mountain sides in another place. The redwood forest, the snow zones, etc. And the snow section, snow and ice section of the map takes up less than 20% of the entire map. Less than, I'd say less than 15% of the entire map. Here, it takes more than, a, I would say almost a third. Because there's all of the lower quarter section. There's also snow in the upper quarter. And there is snow in the lower right quarter. So it is almost all of that bottom left section. And then parts of the other two. It's it's bonkers. And you can get maps that have it even worse. Those are portals. Portals are awesome. Um, here's the desert. It is the desert at night. I wish I could make it day, but we can't sleep and make it day like we can in Minecraft. Um, giant scorpions. Those are called terror birds. I hate them. Let's see. Do we can find anything really weird up here. I am hot, but I don't care. I'll just go through my food a little bit quicker. And my water. More terror birds. See, this has big stretches of desert up here. And it's basically uh, scorpions and birds and uh, some other things. The doom lands are the, where the interesting stuff happens. Doom lands is where you have these big sandworms that come up out of the sand out from under you. And there's uh, like uh, elemental golems. Oop, I think that's one. Yep, there's a golem right there. I think, or something. I'm not going to get very close. No, that's a cyclops. Okay, yeah. The Doomlands are where interesting stuff happens. It's where like minotaurs and cyclops and whatnot. Yep, see, there's a Minotaur right there. I think that's a Cerberus. It's basically anything out of Greek mythology. It's somewhere in the Doomlands. Um, Burgress says, Vagrim and his toads. Yeah, I had a whole herd of... Yeah, I had a whole herd of the frogs in the Swamplands. Yes, and I have the actual saddle. I have I have the saddle blueprint in this game for the uh, for the Beazle Bufo, which are basically the, the devil frogs. And I have the saddle. I can make the saddle. If those frogs actually were in the game, I would be able to put the saddle on them and ride them. But for some reason, the saddle is in, but they're not. Which I think is kind of dumb. Um, yeah, terror birds are annoying in Ark, Sisberg. Although they are hilariously fun to ride. Yeah, there's no shovels in Ark trying to make a flat wall. But you can't because there is a three-inch high sand drift in the way. Yeah, and that's totally true. That is one annoying thing about Ark is that there's no level landscape. It's one thing I like about Pixar is that it's really easy because it's voxel-based and block-based. It's real easy. Make a perfectly flat base. It's easy to make nice, symmetrical, even builds. You don't have to worry about wonky landscaping or anything like that. It's cool. In normal Ark, there's mods you can get that let you stack foundations and sink foundations into the ground so you can make level platforms. You can get around that problem. But yeah, just vanilla game to vanilla game, yeah, building an arc is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, yep, okay, I'm going the right way. So yeah, um, and like, here we go, the sun's coming up. It's a, it's a very pretty game, I like it. Um, you get the giant store pods, if you don't mess with them, they won't mess with you. It's a total lie, but whatever. Um, it is a really cool game, and I really do like it. It's just like... Uh, let me see if I can bring this up here real quick. Um, okay, Saddles. Parasaur, Theomia, 
Ichthyus, Carbonemsis. Those all exist. Pterodon, Pachys. Uh, Magic Mole. I do not believe the Magic Moles have been imp implemented at all. I, I don't think these things exist. Um, anglers, I've seen those. You can put saddles on them. It's kind of weird because there's no scuba gear in the game. At least if there is, it's way high up. Um, let's see. Raptors, Triceratops, Dodicarus. Dodicarus got nerfed very, very badly. They move at a quarter of the speed that they used to move in the arc. So they're even slower. And uh, they took away some of the benefits they had of being able to kill landscape with their uh, with their tail and instead moved it to the rolling ability. The rolling ability now damages the landscape when they roll. The problem is that means you don't want to use that to get around quickly because it makes the entire landscape look like crap. And you end up picking up 16 stacks of dirt uh, just because you left your house and your Dodicarus is completely weighed down. It's They, they ruined the Dodies, basically. Terror Bird Saddle, uh, Beazle Bufo. These are not in-game. If they are in game, I have yet to see one. I've flown around a lot of swamps. I've seen sarcos and all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, fairy dragons, I think these are supposed to be in, but they got out, taken out in recent patches. Um, Shadow leopards and centaurs are. Hippocampus is big and weird looking, but it does. Percoptodon, I'm not even sure what a Percoptodon is. Um, cave hyenas, I've seen. Argentabus, we don't have a, a map with uh, with golden lands, so I have that say uh, that that saddle, but I can't use it because there's no map area to actually go tame, tame one. It's dumb. The magic moles do exist. They're just underground in the caves, says Fergcrab. I I don't know if they do exist. They're extremely rare because I've done yes. a, a stupid amount of burrowing underground. Not just under my base, but under... What I'll do is I'll go to a safe part of the zone. Like, this is a all grasslands. I'll go to the edge of a grassland that's right up next to a snowy, snowy biome. I'll dig down and then under the snowy biome, right? Instead of getting into the snowy biome on the top, I'll go underground to get into the snowy biome. And I've hit caves and stuff like that while doing that. I've not seen one single magic mole. If they do exist, either the spawns are broken, like they're so rare, incredibly, incredibly rare that you'll never find one, or the spawns are broken or they were taken out in a recent patch. There's some stuff that was in previous patches that does not exist in the current one because for some reason Snail Studios the people that make the game just turned them off and nobody knows why here we go here's a better look of Trunks' place from from uh, daytime and I think all of this stuff is friendly but um, let's just hop off here real quick Iris passive tameable Magic creature, frozen lands, center, frozen lands, frozen lands. Doesn't say what it is. What is Iris? Iris is an ice thing, I think. Frozen lands, ice thing. It's cute looking. Um. I could never figure out figure out what Iris was. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, here we go. Groot is a treant. That's what that thing was that was looking at me. Oh. Let me get past. Ah. If you get close to the tree, you can change them. Transform into a tree. Oh. There we go. It's a tree. Ta-da. I want a tree. I'd love to get one, but I'm never going to tame one. Uh... Buck beak. Buck. I had uh, uh, devil frogs and scorpions, both desert, de both swamp things. Now scorpions are only desert uh, in Pixar, and I think in normal arc they they got moved. But um, uh, yeah, I had scorpions and um, devil frogs at my swamp base, and I liked them. I want to get a scorpion and actually put a saddle on it. You can make them poison stuff, and they do some really mean damage. This is what Gina. Gina is an Australopithecus. Yep. There is a, a bridge, a drawbridge, that you can power by putting two of those on either end. And it is broken right now. It does not work. Um, Trunks was let down by that. It's in-game. It just doesn't work. This is an ice bear. I think they're kind of adorable. They will maim and destroy you and eat your intestines for a snack. But I think they're kind of adorable. There's George. That's the other Australopithecus. Hello. Buckbeak. Looking big and regal and mean and horrible and... Ugh. 
Boop. That's all trunk stuff. Trunks is the one that's got all the fancy stuff. Oh, let's go look at the dragon again. Hang on a sec. Because Trunks is the one that likes to somehow manage to figure out how on earth this game works. Yeah, Trunks has been throwing himself at it. Oh, look, it is snowing again. I am shocked. Let me put my winter clothes back on. So, yeah, this is George. He's got his head buried in the dirt right now, but, you know, whatever. Um... Um, yeah, he's got three, six, he's got eight out of nine on the aggression meter. It's the most, one of the most ha hostile things in the, in the game right now is the, uh, ghost dragon, I think. There might be one other thing in the doomed lands that's more dangerous, but I doubt it. Um, Hart is on vacation for a week. Out of town, not on vacation, but out of town. That is a soul reaper, Toshiro. They are very creepy. Can tame them though. Um, but Hart is out of, out of town for a week, so she's got all of her stuff packed up. All of her tames are in block form. Is this your tiny little hut? Yes, that's my tiny little hut. Is there anything in it? Actually, there's a fair bit. Really? Do I have any food in this guy? Nope, I don't. Okay. There's tons of beef in there, I think. Uh, the jerky. Well, 44 meat. One shot from, uh, two shots from a coyote. One kill. So, yeah. Removed one meat, two meat, three meat, four meat. Yeah, I flew all halfway around the map and I starved my poor pteranodon. You'll notice the, uh, Food meter never emptied. Dunno. Um, we run across a lot of problems with this game. There's a whole bunch of stuff that seems to depend upon world gen and is there's too much that is critical or biome linked that depends upon world gen for the world gen to be so random. What is this a glass door? God, how pretentious. That is a glass door. That's pretentious <laughs> as heck. Ooh, la la, I've got a glass door. Ugh. They're um, cheap. <laughs> glass is a pain on the neck. Uh, let's see. Figured rabbit. A, a wolf. Oh, a coyote, sorry. Um, Dodicarus. You have a compy named Chompy. I'm judging you right now. Parasaur. <laughs> Ceratops. I've died. I've managed to kill so many of each Ooh. one of them. I've stopped caring for names. Ice Sculpture. Wow. Okay, where did that thing come from? I don't know. It's it's here. Owner, ordinary tribe. Um, you have your firefly pillar. Your box spot. Do anything? Nope. PVP's off. Hold on. Can't kill him. <clears throat> um. And then we go way down here. More firefly lanterns. This is where your fridge is and a couple of your huts. Very cool, very cool. You've actually got a pretty a deceptively large base. Whee! Got your glass door. Ooh la la. All of the stone that you see in my building is the refined stone. <laughs> yeah. Which isn't that hard to make. It's stone. Then you build the stone the regular stone, and then you go through the decoration hunt and refine it. More food. Um, who did all the crops down here near the water line? Was that you? Hart. Oh, Hart did that. Okay, yeah. Including the trees. Yeah. Tempted to chop the trees down. They've been sitting there taunting me for like a week. Um, so, yeah. I think this game is gorgeous. I think it's got a lot of potential. But Snail Studios is updating it at a... Everybody, snails pace. Snails pace. Uh huh. And um, they are pushing out updates. I cannot say they're not pushing out updates. They are. They've put one out in the last two weeks. Um, that had some fixes in it. And that's cool. But oh, I knocked it out to see. Come here. Are you just gonna go sink to the bottom of the ocean and sulk or what? Apparently. Wow. Okay. They drown. 
most of the animals drown in water pretty quickly if they're not tamed. Yeah. Okay. Let's go over here. I'm dumb enough to say, what do you, what do you think we do some flybys on a on a sauropod and see if we can kill one? But I, I don't think it's possible for me to do that. Feeling a sauropod would eat you out of the sky. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's probably just going to be one tail swipe and I'm going to be dead. Okay. Uh, we are an hour in. Good. I've been killing time just just slowly enough. Um. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm going to park you here. So here's problem number, or tip number one that I will give to you if you're a dino rider in ARC or in Pixar. Uh, don't look forward when you're staring at stuff like doors or walls or windows. When you exit, it's E, the same activation key to interact with everything, which is kind of dumb, but whatever. Uh, look down, and you'll hop off safely, and you won't open a window accidentally at the same time. <laughs> of I don't know. I've landed on top of my little rooftop, mm -hmm. and I've pulled my ceramic roof tiles off. Yep. Oh, you were holding shift at the same time. That's why. No, I wasn't. Yeah, the game thinks... Well, okay. The game thought you were holding shift. I don't know why. What a that's, a, that's a totally different argument, totally different conversation, but it thought you did. Whether you were or not, it's a whole other story. Um, okay. Let's go back down into the... Uh, no. Yeah, drop. Thank you. I always forget to switch it. Uh... I had to implement these ele elevators, like I said, because I had a ladder going all the way up this wall, and it went up into the loft at the top where the pteranodon was. I had to first sh set it where the ladder was offset. It wasn't one ladder going all the way up. It was one ladder into the main room, and then a second ladder off to the left of the big door that went up into the loft. Um, because I kept falling off the ladder because I would get shaken off of it by sauropods. And I would fall to my death every single time. So then, that wasn't enough. Just having this ladder go this short distance, I would get shaken off of it by a sauropod, fall to my death. So then I was like, okay, fine. And then I put in the elevators. And so far, I, I apparently we got one bugged on stream. But otherwise, we haven't actually had any critical deaths. I've considered putting some of the uh, elevator systems in here. All the way down to bedrock. But eh. we're probably going to be resetting the server, if anything, anytime soon. Um, okay. Anything I need to. Oh, Trix Hunter, you came in at the wrong time. <laughs> I can't wait to get this game, says Trickster Hunter. Yeah, yeah, um, don't. You can wait to get this game. You should. You need to. This game is not ready for being purchased. It's not worth it right now. They're advertising a whole bunch of stuff that does not exist in the game. If you look, it's got really bad reviews. It's a gorgeous game, it's a shame that it's got bad reviews, but it's got bad reviews for a reason. Okay. Let's see. This magic tree is up here somewhere. Dun -dun -dun, dun -dun 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 -dun. So yeah, you want to wait to get this game. I'm sorry to say. This might end up being the last time that I actually live stream it because nobody else has got interest in it anymore, really. Trunks does a little bit, and Hart does a little bit, but basically Hart is just playing, she's not playing the game, she's just doing Collector. Which I guess is a form of playing the game, maybe, maybe that's a little too harsh and judgy of me. But she's not, she's not doing the normal playthrough of, you know, taming dinos and advancing through that. She's basically just collecting stuff and not using it. And, you know, I guess maybe that is a way to play it, and I shouldn't be judgy about it, but it's different and weird. Um, what kind of berries are these? Oh, mayo berries, okay. Um, let's walk across the water in the snow. Mm, smart. By the way, you can actually get snow block build up underwater. It's hilarious. I know! Man. Uh, this is... I'm gonna go corn. It looks like corn is probably corn. Sever root. Oh, there we go. Long grass. Sorry, it's not corn. It's long grass. Wheat. Narc. Oh, narco berry. Oh, no, that's a natural one. Never mind. Omar berries. Da 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 da. Tinto berries. And now I've come to chop your trees down. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely pointless to grow those. They never actually give sa uh, saplings. So you ha keep having to go back to the actual forest to get them. And, wow. Oh, this is cool. It's a cave with nothing in it. Um, you have to keep having to go back to the magical forest to get more saplings from the magic trees. And when you cut one down, it gives you maybe half or a third of what a normal tree would give you. It's... I just don't think it's worth it. And considering you need, I think, how much, how much was it to make this magic crafting table? Uh, I needed, I could tell. It felt like a hundred. Nope, it's not, it's not quite that bad. Um, it's 30 magic wood, and those three trees gave me, uh, 12. 12. Uh, it is, um, 50 magic bark. I got 15 from those three trees. And then magic fiber, which is actually kind of easy to get. You just walk around and hit him. Um, uh, yeah. The magic system is very, very broken. I don't care about reviews. If I like the game, then I'm going to play it. The way I see it, every game is not perfect. It takes time to get it perfect. But the only way to do that is to support the game and buy it. But that is me. I do get what you're talking about, Trickster Hunter. The problem is, I'm not talking about, you know, oh, the game has this little bug or that little bug. I'm talking about how there's whole segments of this game that haven't even been implemented yet that they're advertising is actually being in the game. They're saying you can do these things and you can't, which is deceptive advertising. I get that you want to I get that you want to actually support the developer, but the developer is lying to us, and that's not a great thing to support. That's not the kind of behavior I like to encourage personally. Maybe you do, I don't. Um, they have tons of stuff in this game that um, makes no sense in terms of how it's been put in, and it actually impedes gameplay like uh, the magic system. In order to get into the magic system, you have to go into the magic forest, which is high-end, but a lot of the magic stuff is low-end skill. You can start doing it at level 10 or 20, I actually think 20, but there's no way you're going to survive in the magic forest to get the supplies to make all the skills you've learned until you're at least 40 to 45. Because you'll die instantly otherwise. That makes literally no sense. I got the, um, let me see if I can go find it, hang on a second. Weapon, firearms, attachments. These engrams, well, first of all, I, I can't read the description. If you'll notice right there, it, it cuts off. Attach this to a supporting weapon to, and I can't read the rest of it. This, I can't attach to any weapon. I got this in the low 20s, and I cannot attach this to any weapon until level 55. Scope, same thing. Flashlight, it says pistol, standard pistol, not primitive pistol. Um, a long neck rifle, rifle, etc., etc. Um, the simple scope is machined pistol, one shot rifle, machined rifle. All of these I cannot put on any of the weapons that I got this at the same time as, which are low 20s weapons. The engrams make no sense in how they're put together. Um, see, level 30, pistol, and then you get a simple scope. That you can't attach to it. Yeah. See, this says, flashlight attachment. Supports pistol, not simple pistol. It says pistol, but it makes a primitive pistol. See, that's the thing. This is actually making something totally different from what you're getting advertised. This does not work on it. It's pistol, standard pistol, long neck rifle, um, standard assault rifle, etc., etc. Silencer, it says long neck rifle, pistol. You cannot put this on the gun, on this gun, doesn't work. This has to be on a higher tier light gun or uh, uh, or machined pistol or whatever. It, it won't go on this primitive pistol that it makes. Even if you get this and refine it in the workbench, the firearms workbench here, it still won't take those attachments. Now here's the other doozy. The feature that lets you attach these things to the weapons hasn't been in implemented yet. It's been confirmed by the developers. Even if this did match up, you wouldn't be able to attach it because they haven't put the code in yet. Um, uh, you know? Magic skill, you can start at level 20. Magic sleepy arrow. And this requires um, wood. It requires a narco or stone arrow. Magic berries from magic forest. You will die trying to get them. 
uh, magic bar- mage weave bark from the magic forest. You will die trying to get it. And some, I think, uh, b- 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 earth stones or something like that. Thunder. Thunder stones, yeah. Uh, which you can find underground and you can get those pretty easily. But you can't get the stones to actually make this until you get this at level 30. So there's a 10 level gap on a recipe you can't make because you have to get this wooden wand right here. That's stupid. They have shuffled all the engrams and all the recipes from Vanilla Arc to make this completely new system and feed it into their own little system and it, it, it's broken big chunks of the game. Hunt, tr- uh, Trickster Hunter says, I don't really care about attachments. They do nothing for me. Just letting you know what I'm uh, that I'm buying some ga- this game at some point. I'm, I'm hip if you really, really like it and you want to buy it. I'm just letting you know this game is it's early access for a reason. And I am of the point that basically you need to be really cautious about early access. You need to expect that if you spend 20 bucks or 25 bucks or whatever it is for this game right now, that you are losing that money and you will never see any value out of that or enjoyment from it again. You need to expect that. So yeah, that's that's just, you know, it's one of those things. Um, whole magic system is a mess right now. You can kind of fight your way through it once you get up to like about level 30, 35, 40. You can start fighting your way through it and start getting resources for it. And then let you deal with that message. I think somebody needs a timeout for a little while. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm really really excited about the potential, the possibility of Pixar like six months down the road, a year down the road. But as it stands right now, the reviews of the game are so horrible that I don't think the dev studio is going to survive and make enough money to actually finish the game. That is my big worry right now: is that this is just going to die on the vine, half finished, or less. Um. I really wish I could turn off the Howling Wind, but I can't. No, you can't. I go to options, audio, apply. There's sound effects, but that's everything. Like, there's no volume for, like... Atmospheric. Atmospheric, yes. Yeah, or ambiance. So many games have an ambiance slider. Oh, God. Okay, um, that's another issue, that wind noise constantly. Yeah, if it is either, you have all these different seasons. If you look in the top left corner, there's different seasons that you can have. There's sunny, which is great. There's no wind. But then there's snowy, there's rainy. There's thunderstorms, and thunderstorms are incredibly dumb because basically what they want you to do with thunderstorms is push you back to the Stone Age. You can't use metal tools in a thunderstorm or you'll get struck by lightning and killed. You can't use metal armor or you'll get struck by lightning and killed. The only way around it is this thing called a lightning rod hat. If you'll notice, I've got two of them right here. You can't repair anything that has a damage meter in the game. It says broken. I've got a shield somewhere, I think back at my old base, that is broken. I cannot repair it because it, nothing in the game that actually takes damage is repairable. The mechanic, it's been confirmed by the developers. Nobody can fight me on this. It's on the Steam sub discussion forums for Pixar. They haven't put the code in yet. They said, oh, we haven't gotten around to making that do anything. So they have tons of stuff that will break, but isn't fixable. Why put the break mechanic in if you haven't put the fix mechanic in yet? That seems excessively cruel. Um... Thank you, Hansi! Um, okay. I have tons of Dillo poison things. I don't know what to do with them. But the uh, hats, these are hats that you make. Primitive lightning protection. And basically, it's a helmet that you have to put on. It does have a little bit of an armor rating, but it's got no thermal insulation of any kind. Hyperthermic or hypothermic. Uh, It's barely got an armor rating compared to copper or iron armor. And you have to wear one uh, so that if you do get struck by lightning, 16 blocks underground under a solid stone structure if you get struck by lightning and you will that you can actually live and you can survive the problem is those hats break with one or two lightning strikes let's be generous and i'll say three 
I have uh, been struck twice and had a little bit of durability left on it. That's what uh, that's what this one is. Got struck twice, and I you know basically ran for cover. Um, <clears throat> so <coughs> incredibly dumb. The lightning system, the weather system, um, the snow basically uh, turns the normal grasslands into the snowy lands, and then if it's snowing in the snowlands, it becomes freezing, which basically means that even if you have full fur armor, the only protection that there is in vanilla arc for cold weather, fur armor, if you have full fur armor in this game and it's snowing in the normal biomes, it is freezing in the snowlands, and you, if you stand around too long in there, you can literally die of exposure. It does health damage to you. And there's no solution to it. That that just seems incredibly dumb. There's big chunks of the gear that you basically can't go to that actual biome. So, yeah. I'm, I'm not a fan. Um, does anybody have any questions about Pixar? I mean, there's lots of wonderful things to it. I think the actual architecture, the blocks, the way the doors work, and you have the big behemoth gates, fencing, elevators, stairs, all sorts of great stuff. You can do some really wonderful and pretty looking decorative things with this actual game. Um, so, I mean, it's not like, you know, oh, it's horrible, full stop. Let's, you know, never touch it again. It's a very pretty game. You just have to temper your expectations. This is not Ark. This is, this is... Minecraft with a higher hostile creature threat level, basically. If you wanted to play extremely. just extremely, yeah, extremely higher. If you wanted to play just within the, the, the novice grasslands and poke around at it, do a little bit of mining and advancing, stay with the low level creatures like all of this stuff. It is snowing again. Great. Um, then you could stay here and you could piddle around with this in area and you could get up probably to about level. 45, about level 50. Oh, look, I'm level 45, about level 50. I haven't advanced any farther because I don't want to go into any of the other areas because it's a complete waste of time. It's a complete waste of time, and you know you're going to die. Yeah, well, with Ark, okay, to be fair, with Ark, you should, if you ever leave your base in Ark, normal Ark, you should expect to die and lose everything. That's the way you play normal Ark. And while I think that is horrible, and there are mods that you can get to fix that, that is still the way that Ark is designed, and this game is based upon Ark, so I cannot bag on it for that. The problem is, the aggression meters that these creatures have, higher, higher aggression meters, if I have something that's got an aggression rating of 3, and it's level 50, it can be one shot by something, or two shot by something, that's level 5 and has an aggression meter of 4. Just because it's got that one extra aggression meter rating, it's got a massive damage multiplier, and it will kill my ride before it even gets a shot off. I know that because it's happened to me. I've lost two T-Rexes that way, I've lost three Parasaurs that way, and it's just dumb. Um, you know, I've got a level 50 Parasaur, it should be able to do some kind of damage on a level 5 Coyote. But no, the coyote charged in, hit one, half of my Parasaur's health was gone. I started to turn around and run, the next half was gone, it was done, and then it attacked me and did the same thing. One shot, two shot, dead. And I was in full iron armor. The aggression meter is broken. If they fixed that, if they fixed the damage multipliers, it would make the game a lot more playable. Even if you were going to do that, though, you still have to play it the way you would play Ark, where if you're leaving your base, you are expecting to die. That's just the way the game is played. And I cannot fault it for that. I cannot say that is a problem. Hi, Heart. Are you out of town yet? We were hoping you were gone. I mean, we thought you were gone. I know, right? Um, there's stuff about the game that I, I, I see why they did it, or I see what they were trying to accomplish. Like, um, with the magic system, they were trying to make it a bit more interesting, a bit more zing. They're trying to add that little bit of mystical that Minecraft has with, like, Ender stuff and Endermen and, you know, the Nether. Potions. And, and, you know, stuff like, yeah, and potions and stuff like that. And They're enchanting. Trying, yeah, and enchanting. They're trying to add that. You can do enchanting in this game. If I get a gun and put it in here, enchanting system. Let me see if I can get my pistol. Oop. So here's the thing that's super awesome, right? That is sarcasm, by the way. Um, pistol. 
got this cool effect. Increase ice damage. Increase ice damage. Da 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 da. Here's a problem. If I do ice enchant on the pistol, right? I put some ice crystals, some water magic stones in here, and I enchant the pistol. By the way, you notice this button down here isn't in English. I don't know what the language that is. Maybe somebody can squint at the screen and tell me. Um, actually, let me see if I can find some water stones and I can make it light up a bit more. Maybe. Yeah, I think this will work. Uh, inventory, we put these in here. Enchant, ice. Oh, it requires 10. 10, 10, 8. Okay, let's see what we do have, and maybe we can make the button light up. Um... Fire! We have a lot of fire. We can do that. Let's make that button light up. Enchant. Fire. There we go. I don't know if that helps, but there is the button with the uh, mysterious language in question uh, written on it. I think it's kanji. Well, yeah. Well, okay. Is, is kanji mean like Japanese? Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that was... That looks like it's not Japanese to me. That looks something akin to... Um, Chinese or maybe Korean. That is a guess. That is an extremely, extremely uneducated guess, though. So if you do know better and you look at that and you say, oh, that's Japanese, then I'll take your word for it. Um, but basically, okay, so I can put a fire enchant on my pistol. If I put a fire enchant on my pistol and I put bullets in it and shoot it at something, guess what happens? It does not get set on fire. It does not take any extra fire damage. I have to instead use this to enchant a, a gun with... There it is right there. The wife just came in. She's squinting. She's squinting. Chinese. It's Chinese. Yeah, there you go. Um, Chinese, she, okay. She would know better than most people I know. Uh, so if you put a fire enchant on here, what you instead have to do is come up to... Nope, wrong table. Come over to the magic table, which takes resources and all sorts of pain in the neck. And then you have to make fire bullets to use in the fire enchanted gun. In order to get the effect. Right. And well, in order for it to do anything. Now, here's sure. the thing, though. You can put these fire bullets in the gun and it will still do fire damage. The fire enchant just lets it do extra and it is not communicated at all. It is very misleading. Oh, I'm going to put an ice enchant and it says increases ice damage, increases ice damage. The thing is, it doesn't say adds ice damage. It just increases pre-existing. So I have to use ice bullets and an ice pistol in order to get any kind of in yield out of these. So it is a way to push the bullets even further, which is extremely misleading. I was going to ask the nice lady for coffee, but then she took off. So I, I, <laughs> uh, may, maybe she'll actually hear me. I don't know. Um, yes, Hart, you... The magic gems can be gained from gem spiders, spawning caves in non-magical binds. Yes, but why would you want to even try attacking them when you're only level, what, 15? 15 or 20, yeah. Plus, gem spiders, uh, you can kill them with melee weapons, but it takes three times to four times longer than with magic weapons. You will probably die. It's possible if you find one that's bugged out, like the AI is walking it into a corner or whatnot, but... Um, yeah. I killed a few things like that, yes. Oh, miss, I uh, sent five bits. Yeah, so she probably like, heard you. I'm hoping. I, I was going to ask the nice lady for coffee, but then she left. Pretty please. Sugar on top. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, she'll show up or not. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I have, there's a lot of problems with this game that I have. There's a lot of uh, issues that are, I, it's not that I think it's, uh, uh, you know, a, a poorly designed I don't agree with oh they made it hard like with Ark they shouldn't have made it hard they should have made it easier like with Minecraft actually vanilla Minecraft is hard as balls if you haven't played it thank you very much <laughs> that is very true if you if you are fresh and you're walking into this game you're like what's this yeah hello yeah. creeper oh my god yeah vanilla Minecraft is actually not as easy as a lot of people think because people play modded and that kind of throws things off so to speak it's it's vanilla Minecraft is a lot harder than people think it is, or, or than they remember it being. 
So, um, uh, I'm in full support of cheesing things with a Terra, like gem spiders. Uh, I could see that. Yeah, oh, that's one thing I think is dumb, is that you can pick things up with the Pteranodon. They added the ability for Pteranodons to pick things up. Um, I, I pointed at a box. I don't know what happened. Um, uh, <laughs> they they uh, added the ability for Pteranodons to pick up, because can, Pteranodons can't, they're just a ride in Vanillum Arc. All they do is fly. That's it. That's the only use that Pteranodons have. Here on Pixar, you can pick things up and drop them like you can with the Argentavas. I suspect that the reason they did that is because maybe RGs aren't finished or I don't know what. But anyway, if you pick stuff up and drop it, it doesn't take drop damage. I've dropped some dinos from some pretty incredible heights several times in a row, and my Pteranodon has run out of stamina before the thing died. And I can't even tell if it took any damage. Like, I don't think it. I don't think they do. So it's. I think that's incredibly stupid. Hey, the reason how come I? The reason how come I think they do is because the the way they spawn in is they spawn above the highest Y level for the area and mm -hmm. drop onto the area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they don't. They don't just spawn in on the ground. No, they spawn up in the air and drop. Yeah. See, Berg says if you do that in a regular arc, you kill things. That doesn't work in Pixar. In Pixar, stuff spawns 16 to 20 blocks above the ground and just falls in. Which means stuff would be spawning in with low hit points constantly if that was the case. If they took fall damage, nothing does. So picking stuff up with an RG, even if you had a map area that you could tame an Argentavis, picking it up with an Argentavis and flying up really, really high and just dropping it to kill it, you cannot do that in Pixar. Buzz of Beast, new subscriber. All right, thanks for the subscription with Twitch Prime there, Buzz of Beast. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I normally, <laughs> by the way, have a webcam in the upper left-hand corner, but my webcam's broken. I am sorry. Instead, I, I have this. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I know, it's awesome. Um, anyway. <laughs> need to go find the audio clip. <laughs> yeah, I really do need to go find that. Um, um, yeah. Um, uh, okay, what crazy god is dropping dinos? Yeah, air dropping dinos, exactly. That's the way they spawn in. They don't do Y-level ground ground height detection. They don't spawn them at surface level. They just spawn them in about 50 blocks up in the air or 20 blocks up in the air, depending upon the, the terrain. And they just fall out of the sky. It rains dinosaurs. Um, okay, let's back up here. Ooh, wait a minute real quick. We suddenly have El Sunny Day. So I'm actually going to go back to my normal clothes. And uh, let's see. If I look at the forecast, I see rain, sunny, and then I think... What looks like either a thunderbolt, a thunderstorm, or uh, I'm gonna guess snow again. Um, Preacher fell asleep at his desk. Stupid rain. Yeah, sorry, Preach. Um, <laughs> Hi, it's like Preacher. A, it's like a sleeping pill for the poor man. Um, okay, I, I think this, I think Pixar has a lot of potential and a lot of possibility. I really, really do. I cannot say this enough. Yeah, Heart of Dragon says, I was so disappointed when I learned fall damage exists only for players. Exactly. I, the whole chunks of strategies that exist in um, uh, regular arc have suddenly been vanished because of that. They disappeared. There's big chunks of the game that we... Like, oh, let's go to Saddles. I looked at this before. Thank you very much. Persnickety Red. <laughs> that goes back to R&D. But you remember that. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yes, I was there during that time. <laughs> it's a good thing I have a webcam. Um, my wife is doing weird things. <laughs> what? You're dancing. Weird? I don't dance. Yeah, that makes you weird, not me. Sure. I won't dance either. <laughs> yeah. Um... I'm mostly worried that if I danced, uh, something might rapidly dislocate and I wouldn't be able to get it back in. That's the biggest worry. On a plus side, Kui has posted I... a link to the Hypnotoad for 10 hours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is a, yeah, there's a, there is a Hypnotoad video, 10 hour Hypnotoad loop uh, video on the YouTube. I should probably just get that and rip parts of it. Um, well, Kui has posted it on Discord. <laughs> yeah. I love dropping dinos from great heights and Pixar is taking my fun away, says Birdcraft. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu, what was I going to say? Oh, there's a thorny boar. I don't think I actually ever learned it. There is. I have never seen one. 
Yeah, because it only exists in the bamboo biome, and the bamboo biome does not exist within our map. It never generated. Also, it's not even on the... Uh, uh, here we go. Thorny Boar Saddle. It's uh, level 15. And uh, it exists in the bamboo biome that's got a whole bunch of other creatures that are kind of uh, kind of a you know Pacific Asian kind of theme, like panda bears. Panda bears are tameable, and they exist in that biome. But the problem is, if you look on the map... Well, first of all, if I could unlock our map, all of it, you would see there's no... Bamboo. Also, if you look in the legend on the right-hand side, there is no bamboo biome listed there. Uh, There's actually a couple other ones. The unlocked map link. Yeah. Off Discord, if I can find it. Rain makes me stiff, sore, grumpy, and tired. Says Dark Preacher. Yes. Oh yeah. By the way, this is where we get to do. Uh, is it? No, it's just the third. Tomorrow's the fourth. Um, we get to do a little PSA. I cannot stress this enough. Please, dear God, don't do fireworks in suburban like neighborhoods and near apartment buildings and stuff. Go out somewhere. Go see a fireworks display. Don't be the jerk that's firing off uh, uh, fireworks in a residential neighborhood with people like that maybe have had military service history and have PTSD from gunfire. It's not cool. It's not kosher. Just, eh, I get the fireworks are awesome. Go out of town and do them. So, yeah. Yes, there are actually tameable pandas. There are. They're adorable. Mm-hmm. We wish we had that biome. Yeah, but we don't. I'll go back to <laughs> um, television. My um, town has, like, three different massive lakes. So, instead of, we're not allowed to shoot off fireworks outside of those lakes. Yeah, you're supposed to do them over the lake. Um... Here's uh, Houston, huge town. So many places you could go to to actually see fireworks. Don't don't be a jerk. Um, oh, let me take this with me. Whatever. Boop. So yeah, I I really there's a lot of cool stuff that I like about. Um, if I remember right, in normal arc, you cannot plant stuff unless you have the grow beds, like the the little planter beds that sit up above the ground. Those are the only things you can plant crops in. You can't do it on normal ground. Because you can't change the landscape in uh, Ark. And I like that you can actually plant stuff in open ground. What they did was they got the grow beds and they gave them a kind of a growth rate boost. And they moved them higher up in the levels for as, an, as a blueprint for engrams. You can still get the growth bed, grow beds, the planter beds. But uh, they have a bit, um, a, a, bit, a bit of a perk to using them instead of just being, you know... Uh, a limitation like in normal arc and I think that's cool they kept the piping system that normal arc has and I think that's very very neat for moving water around and you know the the, the big well and the snow water tank uh, I'm a little irked at this thing the ice box I think it's dumb that they separated out the preservation bin but you know whatever um, uh, they put quests in this game and I think that's actually a very clever way to incentivize people to learn more about the game you get these quest bots that will dot around the landscape by the way this is me taking my Doty for a ride and screwing up the yard. I'm still kind of cranky about that. Um, do you like my crazy coastal garden, Bagram? Yeah, I chopped your vet magic trees down. Uh, it's hilarious. Um, difficulty two. Try gathering some useful resources. I'm guessing like ore and stuff like that. Um, yeah, the icon indicates you mining. Yeah, exactly. It's got the... Uh, and it's cool. I really do like that. Um, there's a quest manager. If you haven't accepted any quests yet, I could accept this quest, but then it would show up on the right half of my screen forever, and I'd never be able to do anything about it until I finished it. Okay. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, the towers? Uh, let's see. I haven't touched the tower because I can't seem to get the will to go into any decent biome. Because I'm afraid I'm gonna die. So if I go near their stars, I feel like I'm gonna be dead. I tell you what, there's there's a tower nearby. Let's go to the tower. Let's take the Tyranodon. I mean, worst case scenario, I'm gonna die, right? Wahoo. Um. I'm gonna put my gun up. I do not want to take the gun with me. As a matter of fact, I don't want to take the bow or the crossbow. Don't want to take any of the ammo. I've got tons of fur and leather. I can make more fur and armor. I'm going to put the pistol away. I'll move this down here. I have a spare. 
primitive wood wand. I'll just leave it on the bar for now. I've been to the towers. You can put stuff in them, but nothing happens. So in Ark, um, in Vanilla Ark, the towers are used to summon in bosses for boss fights. And the bosses will actually drop certain cool things. Um, rare loot and whatnot. You can also use the terminals at some of those towers to trade dinosaurs between servers. Oop. I love my elevators. Oh, yeah, right. He had a level. I'm gonna do stamina. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Um, let's see. That one looks close. Let's go over there. Yeah, uh, normally what you could do is you could take a dino over to one of the terminals. It would There'd be a, a kind of a big flat round gr ground thing directly under the tower. You could go over there and uh, you could actually take your tames over there onto the ground point and there'd be a little kind of a stand-up terminal. It looks like a book stand there with the screen on it and you could poke at it and you could basically you digitize a dinosaur and then you can go to the same tower on a different server on the same map and you could actually or even on a different map i think you go to a different tower and you pull that dinosaur out and you could basically transfer tames back and forth so when the first uh expansion the really big expansion came out for arc that had the desert content and the dragons and stuff there were people that were taking dragons from that back to uh, uh old arc worlds uh, I think they put a limit on that at some point. Like, you could do it with certain creatures above a certain power rating or certain breeds or I don't know what, but yeah. Anyway, we'll go see what a tower does. Mm. Oh, God, that's good coffee. Um, I love the portal system. We've mapped a lot of portals. Um, there's a portal right back there next to my house that goes, let me see, all the way over to zero, zero, the very middle, there's an, a point that says home portal. It goes right to the north of zero, zero, where the big lake is. And so I can shortcut from my house to the middle of the map, and then just south of there in the snow biome, there's a portal that Trunks found, which um, um, takes us to the magic forest directly outside of our old valley when we, where we started. So probably I can shortcut and cut the distance uh, of traveling all the way across the map by about 80%. Which I think I awesome. tried doing that with my level 50 Pteranodon. Yeah. Took the wrong portal that Trunks pointed out to me mm -hmm. and ended up in one of the the dark biome, the ha the hardest biome. Oh, the Doom Doomed Lands. Lands. Yeah, yeah, the Doomed Lands. <laughs> my level 50 died in two hits and I, didn't, yeah. I didn't have a moment to react. Yeah, I was flying around the edge of a Doomed Land and a big rock elemental came up out of the sand, picked up a boulder, and hooked it at me. Just in midair, this rock comes flying straight at me. I'm just going, ah! I, I, I got hit. I think I only got grazed by it or something. But that grazing took away like about three quarters of my Pteranodon's health. And by that time, I was far enough away from it that it had given up, so it didn't throw a second rock, thank God. Terrifying. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. So, there is a stretch of land. See, this is more... This is what we're talking about. Down here in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a big stretch of snowlands that go all the way across the bottom half of the map. And there's another snow castle, by the way. Um, let's put our cold gear on. Whoops, nope. There we go. Um, so there's an opening in the ground, a ravine. Different kind of stone, dude. That's interesting. I wonder what that is. <laughs> Ferg points out at least it wasn't a giant monkey then it wouldn't be throwing rocks. Uh, we do actually have giant monkeys in this, but I don't think they throw that. So yeah, there's a platform here. Whoa, bright floor. I feel like I stepped under the set of Tron Legacy. Good God. Um, oh my God. Oh, my eyeballs. <laughs> Tribute terminal. Yeah, this is a boss fight platform. Um, access inventory. You open up the terminal, deposit items for tribute, and you put certain combinations of stuff in here that you get from dungeons, from caves and stuff that have uh, pre-gen caves that actually have uh, loot chests way back at the back, some of the pre-gen dungeons or whatever, like the, the snow castle. I can go show you the snow castle. The snow castle will have stuff like this where you get certain items that aren't usable. You don't use them for crafting. The only purpose they have is to put them into the uh, platforms, the tribute terminals, 
and certain combinations will summon boss creatures. And I don't even know what kinds of boss creatures. I just know you can summon them. Berg says the snow castles are neat looking. 100% confirmed. That is a Quetzal. They're not actually hostile. I don't think. I like going straight up and then doing this. It looks really goofy. If you look at how the guy's holding onto the saddle. Yeah, I don't think Quetzals are hostile, but I'm not going to mess with it. There are such things as icicle dragons around here, though. Yeah, just a pain to tame. Careful of the snow castle. Stuff in there hurts. Well, I'm not going to land. God, no. But, I mean, it's actually not a snow castle. It's a nice castle. I hate to nitpick. The wiki has nothing on those towers, so I don't even know if they work. But I don't know. I mean, they've implemented it as it's implemented in uh, Vanilla Arc. You got the platform and the tribute terminal. I just don't know if they do. I mean, it seems silly to put them in. I guess you have to put them in because I, they look like such an iconic thing. In Ark, you see those all the time. Uh, but, yeah. There's a, turn, there's a portal down there. You see, you've got these big ice ravines that cut across so much of the map. is just sliced up by ravines. And honestly, if they're not going to have interesting things in them... They're ugly. Why have them generate? I I don't get it. Looks like a pain in the neck to navigate. Ground Ravine generation is over the top for what they yeah. should vanilla base be. Yeah. I shouldn't have to go 50 blocks without worrying if I'm going to fall in a hole. Yep. Yeah, the ravines make it make a lot of the ground mounts completely useless because of the ravines. It just it, it the big gaps in the landscape. Art suggests you need to see what it looks like when you fly straight up on a gargoyle. I don't have a gargoyle. I can't do that. You don't might have... be able to use hers. Uh, all hers are packed away. I'm not touching her packed away stuff. I will I will take it out and get it killed. <laughs> 100%. If you're going to leave your base in Ark or Pixark, expect to die. Expect to lose everything. So if you're lending me your gargoyle, you're not getting it back. Just expect that. She says you could borrow mine. I'll wait for a response. Yeah, just like Ark. Exactly. Oh, there's one of those things. That, uh, uh, oh God, it's fighting something. One of the little uh, pudgy ice things that uh, Trunks tamed. And it's fighting a dire wolf. Let's see if it kicks its butt. Mm. For the poor players who can't afford a flying mount, or those poor players who keep dying and killing their flying mounts because you can't go anywhere. Sounds like you need a Pixar Public Works to build bridges across ravines. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. I think, you know, you could make a habit of actually getting the, doing the whole roleplay thing. Somebody building all the bridges across major ravine junctions. Um, in uh, the grasslands and in a lot of the novice areas. But, I mean, it's going to be more trouble than it's worth trying to do it through the snowlands or whatever. Uh, where are we on the map? I'm not, even, I'm not even all the way through this bottom right coordinate. I'm just going to keep heading west and see what's here. I'm curious! Oh, wait a minute. Nope. Oh, you're in the area. I kept dying. To an invisible snow leopard. Yep. Oh, yeah, they have creatures that can actually go invisible and attack you. Like, they stay invisible. There's a couple of them that do that, and I think it's super unbalanced and dumb. There's a dire wolf attacking an icicle dragon. The little compy looking things. Okay. The ice dragons. Uh, they're called icicle dragons. You will know an ice dragon when you see it. It's going to be as big as an office building. Um, yeah, they're basically ice compies, basically. But they're called icicle dragons, and there's something magical. There's some drop that they have that you have to use in uh, magic stuffs. 
gonna, for what I know, they only drop those ice, those cores. Yeah. And you don't use those cores for a lot. No. You so use I don't know for, why they need to drop so much. You use it for one thing, the ice spear. That's it. The Gargoyle won't die as easily as a Terra, and he can fly fast to escape pretty much anything. He's rumored to be one of the fastest on the game. After you tame him. I mean, if you're okay with losing it because I took it out, I will take it out. What is that? Buh. Okay, that's an ice elemental. That's the thing that Trunks is actually tamed. It's called an ice elemental. There's a decorative block up here at the top of these mountains for the ice zone. It's interesting. Or maybe it's a different form of ice. I'm not sure. To me, it just looks like normal ore that they changed the look of to because it generated in different times, which I kind of like. Um. Yeah. More I posted on Discord. All glory to the Hypnotoad. <laughs> okay, yeah, so Ice Castle. One, Ice Castle two, Ice Castle three, Ice Castle four, Ice Castle five. Those two almost literally touch. The world gen in this game is broken. It's a sunny day and I'm cold. This game does have ants, yes. Tree ants are, are actually in the game. And there's another one, there's number six. There's so many of these flipping ice castles. You could do so much more with this dumb landscape. These things are taken out. Do I see number seven? Maybe. It's almost as if they don't have any randomized control through this randomization. It's just ninety-nine percent randomization. I think it is totally random. There's not even a oh, you have to have a bare minimum percentage of every biome check. It's literally oh, you can have a map that is ninety percent ice and then some novice valleys in a dark forest. You can have a map with no dark forest, no doom lands, no golden lands, no, um, you know, no magic forest, no swamp, whatever. It's it's really, and considering there's so many things that have creatures in all these different biomes that drop stuff that you need for either magic or industrialization or whatever, it seems like you know you're basically making it so it's possible to break whole sections of the uh, skill tree, which is kind of dumb. Um. Uh, another big thing that I have a problem with is the fact that because this is a walled off world and they're not generating, where am I? Oh, I'm in a dark forest. Okay. Still cold. Because I'm uh, I'm in a uh, walled off area, I'm going to start going back north. This whole world is walled off by this range of mountains you see way off in the distance. There is a hard limit. You cannot keep exploring like in Minecraft, which means there's a finite amount of ore. Now, the game company says that every world will generate with enough ore to keep uh, 10 or so players uh, uh, busy for a quote-unquote long, long time. But, I mean, I've already mined out almost all the copper out from under my base that I can find uh, in a pretty wide area of blocks. I've done some pretty long tunnels from my base out around in the surrounding terrain, and I did the same thing back in the old valley. I, I kind of disbelieve, I don't know. I built my house in a coal mine, a coal one mine. of those coal pits. Yeah. It gave me eight stacks of coal mm -hmm. and four stacks of copper. Yeah. The iron mines in the snow are easy to find because they're colder than the rest of the biome. Yeah. Yeah, someone will mine out all the blocks, says Itachi. Yep. I left the taming cage up in the magic forest. It won't be too hard to replace Lexington with a new Lexington. What the heck's a Lexington? The gargoyle thing. Oh. I'm definitely not writing it if it's called Lexington. Sorry. <laughs> you can rename it. <laughs> um, Just be an insult to heart. <laughs> I'm going to rename it to Goober. Um... The game devs never... Yeah, Dark Purchase is... <laughs> the game devs never ran across a Minecraft player. Exactly. Um, uh, there are... I mean, I could really see if this game was put together right, if it was balanced in terms of... They had a kind of a... Some, some sort of limitation um, towards how the... Um, oh, gosh. What am I thinking of? How the world should have a bare minimum number of... Oh, look. It's, not, it's a ghost dragon. 
just dropping out of the sky. That's how they spawn. <laughs> That's how they spawn. You literally just saw a, a a ghost dragon spawn the same way everything else does. It just drops out of the sky. You coming for me? Nope. It beelined over there towards something. I'm going to come over towards these Quetzals if it comes after me and then I can, I can shake it off. Hi, Quetzal. Those Quetzals are huge. Yep, they're massive. You're supposed to be able to put a building on the back of them. <laughs> Don't mouth fart at me. Um, You're hot. Don't I know it, baby? I mean, uh... There, what? Yeah. I love this song. I don't know why, but I love this song. You bring it down. Should have named him Goliath. Oh, you don't like the reference to the cartoon I loved? Lexington? Yeah, you should. I agree with Dark Preacher. You should have named him Goliath. I do love the, the show. I just, you know, Lexington and Brooklyn and all the other ones. It's basically Goliath or die for me. Sorry. Lexington was my favorite character from the Gargoyles cartoon. Whoop. Awkward. I'm going to go toward the needle on the map. That's also another thing I have a slight complaint about. Each different waypoint on the map has no indicator across that little bar as oh, to yeah. which one you're looking at. Yeah, that is that is a holdover to Ar from Ark. I think they're implementing so many improvements from Vanilla Ark, they could have put a better map system and a better waypoint system in, but they didn't. I feel that the waypoint system is even worse than Ark. Dun, 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 dun. Zoom! I was like Lex better than Goliath, so there. I kind of wish the dinos were different colors like an arc. Yeah, that's a kind of a complaint that I, well, I don't have that complaint, but I could see other people having it. <laughs> um, uh, all pteranodons are exactly the same color. All sauropods are exactly the same color. I think it's kind of boring. I, I, I Now, there is a painting system, and in um, normal arc, you can paint your dinos, and there's mods that expand that even further. Um, Excuse me? You yeah. can paint your dinosaur. Yeah, you can paint dinosaurs in, in Vanilla Ark. I don't know about this game, though. Excuse me while I now go paint my pteranodon pink. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. I don't know if you can do it in this game or not. That's that's my point. You can do it in Vanilla Ark, and they have the same painting system in this game. I just don't know if you can actually paint dinos with it. It might just be houses. Uh, actually, no. I'm going to leave it right there. Go away! We don't want any. Dumb sauropods. Um. Okay. I'm gonna go see if I can find Art uh, Hearts. Uh, uh, gargoyle. I think it's her base is like right behind mine. Yeah, it's not far. I intentionally went way farther south than you guys did. Oh, yeah. Just on principle. I can kill dodos now without them crying. Something <laughs> like giving your T-Rex some eyeshadow and some nice lipstick. <laughs> Can't remember who, who was who. Huh? Except Coyote. I like the Coyote storyline all I remember. Yeah. I'm straight west of Fox. Yeah, but that would insinuate that I know where Fox lives. Straight yes, north I, of you. <laughs> do what? Yeah, you're, I guess, I don't know. Do, 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 do. I need to... Munchy munchy. Oh, God. This is what I'm talking about. Look at this, plus two. You see these benefits that they get from actually being mass numbers of them? I, I hate copies, I really do. They're, they're nothing but trouble. Um, they don't do anything when there's not they, eight they, of them. They don't do anything <laughs> because they haven't coded them yet. I cannot stress this enough. There's going to be a point where they're going to release an update to this game and copies are going to become like they are in Ark, and you will all die. 
<laughs> oh, hey, a copy. Oh, wait, there's four. Oh, no. I'm dead. <laughs> okay, Heart House. I don't know where anything is. You're going to have to tell me. Um, if you go on the other side of the big stone area, there's a downward area towards her lower basement. Her heart. Standing around in her underwear. I swear. Some people. Um. Buh. Okay, there's the lower down. Okay, uh, it's got to be in here, right? Yes. You just walked by them all. Do it. Who? What? Where? Yeah, the big, the big gumball thing, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere in there. There goes your chairs with five beds. Thank you very much. <laughs> says, oh, hey, I'm still alive. Yeah, I haven't been on in like three days, and I'm still alive, so. <laughs> okay. Dire wolf. Tika, what? You tamed compies. You have a compy herd? I should take I have them one. All. I should take them all out and destroy them on principle. Um, what's a fungus beast? Yes, I hate compies. Get over it. Carnosaurus? Good God. Mr. Nibbles, a Sarko. Sarkos are pure evil, but they're freaking awesome. They mess things up. Oh, yeah, giant claw mole. Here we go. So she found one. Lexington. Hooray. What does Lexington eat? I don't think it eats anything. It's a stone monster. Everything eats everything. I know. <laughs> I mean, um, if you exit out the big stone gates, there's a little chest off to the left side. Yeah. There are extra engram stuff to learn in there if you'd like. Extra what? There's Same. extra engrams. Oh, bamboo lamp. Can't make that. Bamboo no. wall. Can't make that. Western, western, western. Eh. Lex eats meat. Okay. Um. Oh, wow. You're hideous. Okay. Uh. Fungus beast is a big purple lizard. Does he have a saddle or do I just ride on his shoulder? Shoulders. You ride on him. There's no saddle for him. Ride. Uh oh, okay. What? He doesn't fly. He, 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 he propels through the air and happens to flap his wings at the same time, but he doesn't actually fly. <laughs> I mean, serious, look at this. He's just, he's just standing there, but his wings happen to be moving. That's him going straight up. Look, the model has not changed at all. The legs change positions very slightly. <laughs> yeah, I'm blessed. No, at least they know the difference between on the ground and in the air, and they change the model of the feet. <laughs> That's it. Hashtag <laughs> lazy rendering. <laughs> See, that's it. The, the legs change position slightly. That is the only change. Too chill for supermanning. Exactly. Uh, ex uh, hashtag lazy rendering. Hold the sprint key. He's got lots of stamina. Yeah, parasaurs have lots of stamina. Slowly he ascends into the air. You're flying a giant rock. Basically, yes. Yeah, it, its stamina meter hasn't actually changed much, but... I, uh, I don't know. Yeah, but it's probably gonna eat through meat like there's no tomorrow. Now you're gonna go straight up and defy gravity. That's what I did. So you go straight up like this, and you change the camera. You just kind of hang in there. I, I think this is absurd. I think you do flip upside down on an, any flying an, animal, tame, anything. If you're upside down, you should just fall off. I like how his bottom half keeps threatening to fall off. Yeah, it kind of does. It's disjointed at the waist. A rock that eats meat, that makes no sense. It's only a rock occasionally. Exactly. It's a gargoyle or a statue. 
Technically. Inverted. <laughs> Inverted Superman. No. <laughs> it's, it's not. There's no Superman here. Okay. Uh, let's, um... Apparently you can turn him into a statue. Yeah, you can. Disguise as figure in statue. Oh, in stone. Figure... Yes, disguise as figure in stone. That's called a statue, you dummies. It's like, what? Poor translation. Very poor translation. Um... Let's go back in here. Let's get him and put him back. I am curious. Just don't accidentally enable the auto pigs block auto release. Thorny I've done lizard. That twice. Yep. Journeyman Pteranodon Zaddle. Journeyman Raptor Zaddle. Did you get those ones from opening the loot things yeah. that travel the sky fungus beast what is the fungus beast again did we establish oh here we go carpal lizard oh okay that seems like a letdown suits oh, okay um I hope this thing eats meat oh god oh my god Um. <laughs> nope. Hard nope. Putting it back. <laughs> nope. 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 Goodbye. <laughs> Too weird for me. <laughs> the mole apparently eats berries. I I don't care what it eats. I'm not getting within ten feet of it ever again. Um. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. They apparently can dig tunnels and stuff. The face only his mother can stand. Yeah, not love. Stand. Also, the mole makes a mess of the ground on the left click. Yeah, they can dig holes. Supposedly. Oh, Dillo. Dillo, Dillo, Dillo. You're dead. Um... Let's not get too severe with things, Cougars. Jeez. Nope. Killed you first. I'd like to point out that same level 5 coyote that I just one shot with an iron sword will two shot a level 33 parasaur that's got way more hit points than it does. And I think that's dumb. Uh, okay. Meanwhile, when a level 3 coyote attacks me in one hit, I don't lose any health. I've been one shot by a level one uh, direwolf. Oh yeah, I've been killed a lot by direwolves. They are overpowered. Super dumb. Yeah, Dillo swarms in arc and bye. Um, Dillo swarms in arc are definitely cool and useful. Compy swarms were actually pretty useful in arc. They my compies might be useful here, but I still think they're pure evil. Spawning like 20 compies. <laughs> um, can you see that coming in from a distance? But yeah, it's an army. you can have uh, raptor pets. I had two or three raptors, or I think I had two raptors and a dillo that I would go hunting with, and it was super awesome. Uh, I had a, I had a lot of fun with that. This is just all meat and carrion. Um, it's windy. Actually, no, let's go upstairs. Get a better view. Preach had the Dillo swarm in our arcs, or yeah. There was a point where initially I had a, a couple of uh, raptors and one Dillo. And then I eventually, they got, I think they, I left them on aggressive. And they attacked a, a Pariser and it just stomped them once and killed them all. So I started going to stuff like Beezle Bufos, the actual devil frogs, because when you when you attack with them, they would swipe their tongue out and hit something, and that would give a whole bunch of torpor. 
uh, scorpions, I think, were the same way. They would do poison and torpor. Um, and so if you had one of those things and you would raise it up in levels a whole bunch, you could actually torpor stuff instead of killing it, and it made it taming a whole lot easier. So I could get on my big devil frog and go tame, you know, medium to medium high stuff pretty easily with it. Um, yeah, I, I really kind of liked that. I thought it was a cool thing. Um, but anyway, we've been going for two hours. It is time to end this stream of torture and misery. Um, I don't know if there's going to be Pixar next Tuesday. Legit don't know. We've talked about maybe seeing if we could reset the map and get a better world gen, but that's kind of a crapshoot. Because that basically means we may end up having to completely restart. Yeah. Yeah, we would have to completely restart, which would be a pain in the neck. And that won't solve the massive dredge of other problems that we have with the game. Like how the engrams have basically been scrambled and don't make any sense. There's big chunks of stuff that you should not get at certain levels, like the um, like the scopes, like glass ceiling stuff, all these glass building blocks at level 25. That was like in the 70s or 75 in Vanilla Arc. Um, you have an ore detector machine. I think that's kind of funny, but, you know, whatever. I have never used it. I have built one, and then it's been left at the other base, because after I, I built it and then read the description, I'm like, oh, I never want to use this, ever. Yeah. Put the ore you want to detect in the analysis slot, top left in corner in inventory, and then put in uh, the coal mineral. You're not putting coal into it. You're putting in the coal mineral. I would like to stress that there's a lot of bad translation in this game. Um, if the ore you want is detected, you will see a green light. If not, you will see a red light. Yeah, so it's useless to me. Um, um, copper gate? What? Okay, I didn't know I could make copper gates and copper windows. I forgot about that, apparently. Here's the lightning rod protection helmet. Um, Beasel Bufo saddle? Yeah, there's it. Um, yeah, oh, they have uh, minecarts. They put minecarts into this game. That's not something that's in Vanilla Arc, or at least it wasn't. Maybe it's been added recently. And they um, still don't work properly. But that none of it works. There's tracks and turning tracks, and there's a, a moving platform you can, I think, put stuff on. There is a cart. It's not called a minecart. It's called a mini train. The mini train bucket can only hold items. Yeah. The mini train platform can hold items and you. You, yeah. But the platform is so buggy, mm -hmm. you'll get kicked off of it in three blocks. Yeah, so loads of the tracks don't place right or they don't work. You'll put the mini train on it and it'll go for about five blocks and vanish, all sorts of crazy stuff. They are so buggy. I would love to have minecarts. A Minecraft minecart system working in a game like PixBlock would be awesome, but they don't work. Um, Y track, ankle or saddle. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let me sink. Yeah, stuff like this. They put in this pistol skill, but then when you craft it, it gives you a primitive pistol, not a pistol. There is actually a pistol and a primitive pistol. It's two separate items in Vanilla Arc. Yeah, quote two. What's color? Um, um, so, yeah, it's one of those things. Uh, seeds are weird in Pixar. Yeah, we were going over this earlier, Dragon Racer. You might have missed it. There's basically the world gen seed and then the ore gen seed. They're two different parts. So we could get a good map that has terrible ore. Or we could get a terrible map that has wonderful ore. There's no real way to tell with the ore gen. That's the hard part. We could look at the map and kind of use admin mode to cheat and clear the fog of ore. Honestly, I don't see why we can't just see what's where on the map. I don't see why we have to clear the fog. I would much rather have some setting where Trunk could hit a button and unlock the map visibility for everybody. Because there's no great secret. You can see stuff from far enough away on a flyer or on the ground. You know, hundreds of blocks away, I can go, oh, well, there's a snow biome in that direction. Just just unlock the damn map. Anyway. Um, actually, what's more hilarious is you can see farther than your map actually Yeah. Right. You unquote. can see two or three times distance than, than the area that's unlocked on your map. Even farther. It's dumb. Um, yeah, stuff like pistols and like you get simple scope and flashlight attachment and silencer that you can't use and the attachment system hasn't even been coded in. Uh, you know, there is a, a, a finite amount of skill points per level 
unless you tweak the settings on the server and give more levels or um, faster experience or more points per level, then you can actually mess with those numbers in ARC. Maybe you can't mess with all of that in PixArc, but uh, there's by default a fixed number of engram points per level and a fixed number of maximum levels. So you can't learn everything in vanilla ARC unless you tune the server settings. In To have a game like this that is so finite and so limited and they have engrams that are broken and don't do anything, set the engram value to zero and just put work in progress under it, WIP. That's it. That's all you got to do. Um, the magic system, I'm still of two minds on. I think it's a great idea. I think it's horribly implemented, though. Um, the architecture mastery. This frustrates the hell out of me. It's a wonderful thing that you will get one piece at a time that nobody will ever build this way. You have to go get loot drops and or clear dungeons to find these recipes. And there's a fixed number of dungeon chests you might not get it all that way you might have to wait for loot drops and it's rare in the loot drops so not super rare but kind of rare so you have to get a a, a little piece of paper like we saw back at hearts place for each one of these and unlock them and there's bamboo western executive mediterranean and magic you could get separate ones from all of these based on level range and it could take you forever so you're gonna have to build a base and then go back and rebuild it and i would like to stress this is wood. Western, it's still wood. You are still making something out of wood that's going to have crap for structural integrity. So if you're doing it for looks, just give us these for free. Why, why do we just have them level limited? And when you hit the level, they unlock automatically. I don't get this. This makes no sense to me at all. The one thing I'd absolutely love is like the candlelight, the ceiling candlelight, or yeah. again, the firefly lights. They are amazing. Yes. I can see those being put under engrams or something you have to find, but everything else? They're not really? amazing. The Firefly one is amazing. That's it, though. Your Firefly pillar lamp is amazing because you can put a fire bug in it. With the candle lights, like the candle light, the candle wall, the wall candlestick, or the candlestick, you have to keep making and putting candles into those. And that's a pain in the neck. Um, candle. Did I ever get candle? Yeah. I think candles last longer than cold, though. Not a lot longer. No, you, probably you, not. But. You have to make them out of chitin, which means you have to kill either bugs or you have to kill packies to get them, to get the chitin, or I guess doties, but good luck with that. Um, yeah, uh, good luck uh, with that one. Yeah, so you have to make candles out of chitin, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but whatever, they have to pick some substance, they use chitin. Sure, okay. Um, so you have your bug shell candles. Uh, those have a limited lifespan. They do not. They do burn longer than coal slightly longer than coal uh so you're still having to replace it whereas you know i could get a wall torch i could step outside of my room and hit e about five times and get enough thatch to run a torch for an hour and a half it's minimal effort uh, you know why am i crafting a candle every day or two for a you know on my wall lamps you know there's electricity higher up in the game that you can actually get and you're just throwing some throwing some petroleum in there and you know hmm. uh, oh that's the other thing that's another thing i'd like to point out there yeah what the petroleum is yeah the petroleum you get access to that one level furnace and you get access to refine that petroleum into oil but you can't collect that petroleum until level what 60 70 yeah smelter actually the smelter unlocking stuff at higher levels i get because Basically, they have the smelter, and you can use the smelter for certain things. Yes, it so happens that the gasoline is something that is not refined until higher up. It's like gold. Gold ingots are not used, are not really used until much, much higher up, and I think in, used in magic along with silver. Um, uh, iron, you can't really do anything with iron until you're level 40-something. 35 or 40, I can't remember which. I think it's 40. Um... Basically, they're giving you the furnace, like in Minecraft, they're giving you the furnace, and it just so happens there's all this stuff that you can cook with it, quote unquote. All these things you can smelt in it. It's just an. So they're just giving you the recipes. They're not just. Right. No, you buy this. You buy the smelter. You get all these recipes for like copper ingots and gasoline for free. It comes along with the machine. You did not have to buy all the ingot and gasoline recipes. Unlike the pistol add-ons. 
a quote-unquote pistol add-ons. Yeah, you have to buy those separately, and you can't even use them right now. So, yeah. Um, See further than the fog, that is dumb, says Dragon Racer. Yeah. Heart of Dragon says, yeah, that bugs me that the map doesn't unlock what you see. No. It unlocks about a 10 to, I think, 20 block radius around you. Maybe a little bit larger, 30 blocks. And you can see hundreds and hundreds of blocks away. It's dumb. I think if you go into settings, you can adjust that range. I think it's default to maximum, which is about maybe 215, I think it was. Yeah. What, how far away you can see? Yes. Yeah, but that doesn't reduce the, I mean, that doesn't clear up the fog of war problem. God, no. Yeah, all the blueprints in the box outside my base came from ruins around the grasslands. Yeah, you can get them, get some of those from ruins. Yeah, I still think it's dumb that the pretty architecture stuff that has no game purpose, other than looking attractive, just give it to people. Make all the useful stuff like better guns and breastplates and, you know, uh, cool saddles for your dinos that give them armor rating. Uh, put that stuff in there. Just give me my pretty pretty construction stuff. I'm, I'm you know, whatever. Uh, let's drop down here. I'm going to switch over. Brace yourselves. I'm swooping webcam. Woo! -hoo -hoo. There's the face cam screen. Uh, blah. Anyway. Um, I do appreciate everyone coming around to see and hang out with us. I don't know what's going to happen in the Tuesday night slot next week. Might be a more Pixar, which means I'll probably be whining a whole bunch. And I'd rather not do that. I might swap it out for a little while and maybe do some division and see if I can get some people in groups to run division with me on Tuesday nights. I think it'd be cool. Um, uh, Derek Bridges says, Gah! Um, sorry, it's a reflex now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my face cam's broken. Sorry. <laughs> now Lord sees the face. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hi, Big Um, yeah, the wife says, eep. Uh, I, uh, think, uh, some division runs could be really cool, uh, next week. There's some people that are doing leveling up, like Saffram and uh, Crunk Spleen. Dark Preacher's been working on the game some. I've uh, been finding my ability to buy the game. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. Uh, I am, I, basically, Division 2 comes out, I think, beginning of next year. I think it's like February or March is when they announced it. I can't yes. remember. Yes. Look it up. Division 2 comes out, like, early next year. Uh, I'm, I'm tidying over until then, basically, by preoccupying myself with the first game. But, yeah. One of us, Fox, says Dark Preacher. Um, I don't have the money. Yeah. I'm broke. Uh, uh, I will talk to you later. Tomorrow night, we're going to be doing some more Destiny 2. I'm going to go into through the Warmind expansion and uh, generally playing that. I hear uh, through the grapevine that the actual uh, new expansion is only a couple of months away. Um, so September. I yeah, I'm... I'm I don't know what kind Only of changes enough. they're going to start bringing in, but I'm going to at least try and I'm going to at least try and actually fill out the rest of the stuff that I have. I'm still not I'm sure if I'm going to buy the next expansion. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe. I haven't. No matter what, I yeah. probably won't until I see some actual gameplay on it. Right. I'm expecting the storyline is going to be hella dumb. That's where I'm basically. If it's better, great. I will be amazed, but I'm expecting to be absolute garbage. Well, uh, keep in mind, you never, you would never play Destiny 1. I never played it, but I know the storyline for it. So this next no. expansion is going to be 90% story from the first game. Right. So a lot of people have no idea what they're going into. Uh, okay. I followed actually a lot of content creators that played through the storyline for Destiny 1. I followed them on YouTube and watched their playthroughs. So I do know some, I have forgotten a lot of it, but I do know some of the actual lore behind Destiny 1 and how goofy it was and bits of it that didn't make any damn sense. Um, Destiny 2 is just as bad, but in completely different ways. And now some of that's apparently coming back. We're having the big triangle ships are going to attack us. Who know what that is. And um, uh, yeah. Yeah, Heart of Dragon says, Warmind is a lot more fun than Osiris. Yeah, Water Torture is more fun than Osiris. <laughs> yes. I mean, really, it's not hard. You know, oh, I stubbed my toe, but at least I didn't get stabbed by a mugger. Okay? I'm still in pain. It still sucks. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to call it here. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining me. I will see you later. Have a good one. Bye? Question mark? <laughs>